Kiosk. A border kiosk opened in the night, in the dark, in a corner of my room, in that district of the mind that carries heat of tarmac and exhaust, the noise of European tramways. I search for my papers in another language. That language is mine. It thickens to graffiti. How long have I stood by while it thickens? Always so foreign. Now I house it in sleep. Look at its hate. I have no papers to get by. The kiosk sits in the corner of my room and the day is beginning, its first flush. How will I reach the sanctity of streets? There are men smoking there, taking a break. Perhaps the radio will distract them while I dress. But the kiosk has a naked electric light. Walls are peeling in its dryness. Birds start up outside, already on the move. My breathing clangs. I refuse to host this border kiosk silently, but it is rooted deep as a wart. They tell me to wake up and find my papers if I am to breakfast. I have no papers. They sit between me and the door like guns. A border kiosk opened in the night, in the dark. My papers are insufficient, but they say they can go by the eye. Look into the screen, and all will be well, and there will be coffee in the sun. So day comes. I wrote that in the day after the Brexit vote. Um, and the link, I guess, for me at the moment is thinking about what happens when you wake up in the morning and your country is taken out from under you. At the same time, that experience is very different um, from the much more extreme experience of Ashley Erdogan, who you heard earlier from Denise, was one of those writers, a very prolific novelist in her early 50s, who was taken um, because she was on the editorial committee um, which she joined as an act of solidarity of the pro-Kurdish newspaper. So Ashley was taken and ended up waiting for um, a trial for four months in prison, which had an ext extreme effect on her because she's diabetic and uh, has health issues. So it was a huge hit. She was released in December and she's awaiting trial currently. Um, there was a hearing in March when uh, it was just simply confirmed that she could not leave the country. One of the things, if you read her work, and, and I would recommend you looking up her short story called The Prisoner, you'll see this connection between the daily, the everyday, the ordinary, the habitual, the rituals, um, and, if you like, the state of emergency that people are living under. And The Prisoner, her short story, works that through. So these are some thoughts for Ashley Erdogan. Ashley Erdogan, this morning, I am thinking of the nature of shock and social catastrophe and its impact on writers and words. This morning I am thinking of what it means for the police to come and ransack your home, your papers, your writing, its violation. <coughs> or to discover the sureties that guide you daily are provisional and fragile. This morning, I am thinking of your loss of dancing shoes. I am thinking of the way your narratives occupy spaces globally, other cities and bodies, the way they know violence and love. This morning, I am thinking of the way your fellow prisoners grew a plant from seed and nurtured it. I am thinking of your sense of prison as a well. 
This morning, I think of your release as if all returns to normal, and yet it is suspension and waiting. It is exhaustion. So, how it is you live under emergency. Ashley Erdogan, this week I've been reading Svetlana Alexeyevich's Chernobyl prayer, made up of testimonies and stories, documents. When the reactor blew, most human beings continued as if life they knew had just carried on. All its rituals. There were still vegetables and fruit to harvest. Birds returned. People wanted to relate to each other, to embrace, to kiss, to eat. Hats were worn. But there were immediate responses by other creatures, as if they already knew what the Geiger counters would eventually reveal. Bees refuse to leave their hives. And worms, normally dug for fishing, buried themselves meters deep. Sometimes I think of words as bees and worms, as if under the radiations of extreme repression, with the illusion that things continue as normal, breakfast tastes the same, the sun shines, the aroma of morning coffee, the moving of limbs. They need to keep themselves safe and bury themselves deep. It is because of their need to find air, to fly without anxiety and sometimes complex dancing beyond confines and find their way home, to process and digest deeply and create new earth, that we share the solidarity of our community without borders, walking without walls. What happens in Turkey travels. Its travesties and violence do not contain it. Or its burials and paralyses of writers and words, artists, academics, teachers, journalists, as we are. They are under emergency. Ashley Erdogan, your words are here. We will send you dancing shoes. Thanks. <laughs>